Hey everybody, it's Phil Ralston from Sunday's 10 o'clock service. I am in San Diego at a San Diego Padres Chicago Cubs game. Obviously you can see who I'm betting on. And I'm rocking the swag, baby. Check this out. It's a beautiful sunny day, sunny afternoon on Sunday. Cubs are up seven to one. So that's good for me, not so good for Padres. Top of five, and it's a beautiful afternoon in San Diego. Hey, easy to get here, quick drive. Hope you enjoy the uh, service with Pastor Diane. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Phil. Welcome to Worship at Christ the Servant from our living room to yours. We are honored that you've chosen to worship with us in this way today. So turn up the volume and let's get started. We are here, ready for anything here, open to God's hand here, Spirit is moving us here, today I know, I will go, to special place I know. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray together. Dear, Dear Father, Father, I ask you to give me strength to live this day as you would have me live it. Guide me in shining with the light of Jesus Christ in my words and actions. Fill me with your Spirit so that I may be for others an instrument of hope, peace, and love. Use me to bring joy to others so that they may understand the life you desire for all your children. Amen. God hears your prayer and fills you with the power to live today, tomorrow, and every day, enjoying new and abundant life. Live in newness of life. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not count the cost, to fight and not heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, this week, uh, this past week, or actually still happening this week, I should say, uh, we are having our first week of Camp Hope. Uh, which is a ministry that has been going on for well over 18, 18 19 years, yeah, yeah. a long time. And uh, that's where the youth, the uh, high school youth are the leaders and then the elementary age and uh, young middle school are the campers. And we're having, again, just a wonderful, awesome time this week. And the youth who are our leaders are just fantastic. And um, Stephanie Jajak, who oversees them all, is also doing a wonderful, wonderful job. There will be a movie about this week, uh, which will be shown next week because, of course, it's still happening right now. So we will be able to, you will be able to see some of the great fun that is going on this week. Also, this month of July is very close now, and during July, uh, in a citywide uh, kind of effort, you might say, for Lutheran Social Services of Nevada, uh, we are collecting peanut butter. So all the churches, all the Lutheran churches throughout the valley are collecting peanut butter, so you can uh, drop yours off at the office, you can 
send money for a donation, any way you'd like to support that, that'd be awesome. We read from the prophet Jeremiah, the 20th chapter. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name. Then within me, there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary of holding it in and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Okay. Well, I had to refresh my memory a little bit. Um, I just know the prophet Jeremiah is one of the larger books of the prophets. And they're split into the greater prophets, the minor prophets. And all it means is who wrote longer, who wrote more? Like Isaiah, Jeremiah, they wrote more. And Jeremiah, I think, has the distinction amongst the prophets, though. Not only is there a book named Jeremiah, but there's also Lamentations, a second one, that's also attributed to Jeremiah. Uh, again, though, I was learning that he was a prophet for 40 years. That's a long career for anyone even in our day and age. But when you think about how this was centuries ago, that was a very, very long time for him to have carried out that, that ministry of being, being a prophet. And uh, during that time frame that he was, uh, one of the great challenges that came upon the kingdom was the Babylonian Empire was on the rise and they were going to overtake the country to the, the nation of Israel. And the prophet was there to try to warn the people, try to remind them, return to the Lord, repent, rely on God, uh, so that that could be, uh, hopefully that wouldn't happen, that that could then be averted. But the reality was the people didn't really, really listen. So is that when, when he says, um, I must shout violence and destruction? Mm -hmm. He's saying this is what is going yeah. to be because of the, mm -hmm. uh, what, the unfaithfulness yes. of the, could you imagine then in our day mm -hmm. to be speaking against our own country? And it to was be constantly, not well received To either. be constantly, you know, yeah. preaching and shouting mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, shaming your own country mm. for, could you imagine that? What would happen to that kind of... A, a prophet mm -hmm. that would not be received well not mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. probably not in any yeah, country never. yeah um, mm -hmm. so I can imagine that the prophet Jeremiah being you know I would say that the lifelong mission mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. he's getting kind of tired I think of so it. and especially to be bringing bad news to the people and yeah. saying you need to repent you need to turn mm -hmm. around you need to change your entire life the whole country does yeah or there will be violence and destruction mm -hmm. um so of course he's he's saying to to god oh i, I just can't do this anymore yeah. i'm not mm -hmm. gonna say i'm not gonna speak in your name because that's what a prophet yeah. does yeah he says i'm not gonna do that anymore except there is this burning within mm -hmm. me that mm -hmm. i must i must i must yeah so that is what is happening, right? Yeah. Yes, and that's and that's you know because God gave him the message, and he 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 just he is compelled. He he has to share. He has to tell it. 
And the thing is, though, he also has stirred up uh, resentment not only uh, against leaders or, or political leaders or even religious leaders, but even just people who know him well. That's the other dilemma it, it for says, him. It says, even my close, even friends, my close friends are waiting for yeah. me to mm -hmm. stumble. Mm -hmm. But even, even with all of this, the impending doom, as mm -hmm. you say, uh, Babylon, the nation that's going to yeah. uh, come in and destroy them and take them captive, mm -hmm. even with that, Mm -hmm. uh, and even my close friends waiting for me to stumble, he's, he's saying that he's really all alone in mm -hmm. this, and he's trying to remain faithful. But then he ends this section um, kind of with what we would hear in the Psalms. Yeah. Uh, we hear that so often, just the last few phrases. Um, let's see, it says, um, O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, those mm -hmm. evil people, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord. How often do we hear that in the Psalms? So many Psalms start out with that exact mm -hmm. sing to the Lord mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then praise the Lord. For he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. So even though he may see, Jeremiah may see all sorts of trouble, mm -hmm around him and inside him and, and coming, he can end by praising God yeah. and seeing the good that mm -hmm. God continues to do, delivering the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. We read Psalm 69. It is for your sake that I have borne reproach, that shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my kindred, an alien to my mother's children. It is zeal for your house that has consumed me. The insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. When I humbled my soul with fasting, they insulted me for doing so. When I made sackcloth my clothing, I became a byword to them. I am the subject of gossip for those who sit in the gate, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord. At an acceptable time, O God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me. With your faithful help, rescue me from sinking in the mire. Let me be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Do not let the flood sweep over me or the deep swallow me up or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, O Lord, for your steadfast love is good. According to your abundant mercy, turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in distress. Make haste to answer me. Draw near to me, redeem me, set me free because of my enemies. That sounds like Jeremiah I was gonna say, I, wrote I, I, that. Boy. I think so. It's, it's, like, it's almost like we have echoes of what, uh, it's almost, as, yeah, this is like what Jeremiah is experiencing. The, uh, the, the psalm is one that I think does represent someone who is seeking to be faithful to God and be a servant on God's behalf, but somehow that has just not been received or accepted and facing a lot of criticism and, and difficulty. That's kind of the first part of it, the trouble. It talks a lot about the first part we had here. It talks a lot about about the trouble that is being experienced, even, and again, even to that level of uh, sometimes close to home, even that, that there is that. One of the things about this Psalm though, in, it can be about just a person who is God's servant in general, but it can be related to Jesus because one of the phrases that's in this Psalm is a word that Jesus spoke where it is zeal for your house has consumed me. And then there's another phrase that comes up a little later in the psalm. And this, this is something that does very much also seem to echo Jesus' experience about uh, serving and also serving on our behalf, particularly being committed to giving his own life, to, to serving to the point of, for our sake, giving his own life. So I think it's also interesting to come at this it sounds a lot like Jeremiah would have said this or could have said this, but to understand also that there's 
a way you could say this could also be in certain ways Jesus uh, saying, saying this, the kind of challenge Jesus experienced. But then we get to the prayer side of things. So that, that's the calling on God. That's, that's, so first he talks about the trouble, then it talks about turning to God, asking for God's help. You know, we, uh, I think about when you want to encourage someone, mm -hmm. you know, greeting cards, mm -hmm. you might, mm -hmm. although that's getting possibly to be a less and less mm -hmm. kind of thing, it may, may die out with a generation or two, but the idea is you send someone mm -hmm. and it's positive statements and uplifting statements, yeah. or if you're on Facebook, Mm -hmm. and, and you're looking through your Facebook feed, maybe mm -hmm. yours is like mine, and, and people will be posting these uplifting sayings with beautiful photos or, or artistic things. Mm -hmm. And that's not what this psalm is. Mm -hmm. This psalm is acknowledging that life is difficult, mm -hmm. life is messy, yeah. and even so, mm -hmm. Lord, draw near to me mm -hmm. and and there is that hope that is being expressed even in the acknowledgement that your life may be very difficult mm -hmm. and there's no glossing over it mm -hmm. there's no denying that but even so your your voice is to always be saying draw near to me lord redeem me set me free our next reading is from romans in chapter 6 verse 1 through 11. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. So one of the things that uh, Paul has been trying to convey is that uh, it is we are saved by grace through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and that is something that he has been uh, going, uh, sharing, and then also just before this, making a big point about that however great sin, human sin is, uh, God's grace abounds even more. God's grace is way more and abundantly greater than that. And that, that through Jesus Christ, that is that the sin, the human sin, is, is overcome. And then he wants to continue. Kind of, it's kind of a pretend argument you could imagine. Like there's someone else who hears all of that good news that, that uh, Paul is talking about and says, oh, well, if if um, there's more, more grace from God, uh, more and more and more grace, how about we sin some more so God can show even more grace? And I always have this sense of uh, the most Bibles say something like, like by no means. And I think it's something more like Paul would have been sort of like, you've got to be kidding me. You know, I mean, just kind of like, oh, heaven forbid, you know, how could anyone think that? Uh, and then he goes to, on to talk about, about baptism and that baptism really is something that truly changes our lives, really transforms our lives. Sin is more than just um, choosing to do something wrong, individual choices. Paul sees it more like a force or a power that holds us prisoner, captive, oppresses us, 
and that in baptism being connected to Jesus' death and resurrection, it's like we are released from that. We are set free from that. It's as though if we go back, um, remembering the story of the Exodus, it's as though we were the slaves in Egypt and our, our, uh, our master, our oppressor was sin, but Jesus comes and his death, his resurrection is what we are connected to in baptism. And because of that, we've uh, passed through the waters, we've passed through the Red Sea, and now we're on the other side. We're not in the country where sin held us captive anymore. That's, that's the broad meaning of what he's saying. And so there's an there's a absolute truth. Now, do we still sin? Yeah, of course that happens, but, but it's a reminder to say, but you have a new reality. You, are not, you no longer have sin as your owner. God is your owner because of Jesus Christ. I think that's something I appreciate being reminded of, and it's a good thing to be reminded of over and over because we sometimes forget about that truth. You know, I, I, when we get to reading about this and it starts talking about death, mm. I think that's where a lot of us, we just kind of shut our minds mm -hmm. down. I don't want to, I don't want to think about that. I don't want to hear about that. But I think what, what uh, is trying to be brought across, and I, I wrestle with this, is that, um, you know, the, the, there's the condition of sin, mm -hmm. which is we are born into a fallen creation mm -hmm. ever since mm -hmm. Adam and Eve yeah. And that sin in the Garden of Eden, the mm -hmm. expulsion and so on, and, and the Bible tracks how sin spreads throughout the world yeah. and shows that the entire creation has been infected mm -hmm. with this sin. So everything that is born into this world has this condition of sin. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's talking about the little sins, you know, an intrusive yeah. thought that comes into your mind. Oh, no, I've... I've ruined it all because I've sinned again. That's not what this is talking about. Consider yourselves dead to sin because Jesus Christ has done away with that condition mm -hmm. of sin. You will live a normal human life, which includes the sins of daily life, mm -hmm. but you are no longer under that condition of mm -hmm. sin that leads to death. And so when he says you must consider yourselves dead to sin, mm -hmm. well, perhaps he's also saying that even those sins that you commit daily, mm -hmm. those do not captive, cap, those are not- Don't let it hold you captive. They don't hold you captive mm -hmm. and take you away from Jesus mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you are alive to God in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I know so many people do wrestle with that mm -hmm. about the daily failings. Okay, today I'm going to live right mm -hmm. and I'm not going to. And at the end of the day, it's, oh, I didn't make it. And then, uh, you know, thinking, oh, it's hopeless. No, it, we are dead to that condition of sin. Jesus has done that. That's mm -hmm. the major thing. Yes, we do try to live our life uh, the way God would have us live. And, and that's why we pray the way mm -hmm. we do at the beginning of worship every week, you know. You know, Lord, we Living need your help. Who you are. We need your mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are always alive to God in Jesus Christ. And I think I think what I also start to kind of because I know sometimes the way Paul writes and it's it's kind of some you know very conceptual. You have to kind of wrap your mind around it a bit. But if if I would put it in my own way of trying to make it more straightforward, is the first part of what he's talking about is. Remember who you are. You have already been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection. Remember who you are. You have been buried with Christ and you have been raised with Christ and you have a new life in Christ. So that's remember who you are. And then the next part is he's going on and then, okay, be who you are. Just, just live into it, you know, embrace it, live into it. And that that's the truth of who you are. Sure, we will mess up but never forget the truth of who you are and that God gives you through the Holy Spirit that ongoing desire to keep living into that, who you are in Jesus Christ.
gospel reading is from Matthew 10 and verse 24 through 31. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father, and even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. So this is a, a continuation. Um, in last week's Bible reading, we had the first part of chapter 10 where Jesus uh, chose the disciples, called them to now be apostles, and he told them to go out and to carry out ministry just like Jesus did, the same kind of ministry Jesus did, and uh, don't take any resources. So he gave them this whole preparation, right? And also even about how when they encounter some difficulties or challenges. Well, this is still, this is that speech wasn't done. That uh, preparation speech wasn't quite finished. So this is some more of that. This is Jesus uh, getting the, the disciples, apostles, uh, ready to go out in mission. And here, I think a part of it is, again, you, who, what is your identity? It's interesting that even though he's sending them out as, as the apostles now, he takes a moment to remind them of, your identity as a disciple. Um, never, never forget that connection to who is your teacher, who is your master. Now, I, I prefer to, well, slave and master is an imagery we can, um, we can find meaning in it, but I think there's another way of understanding this too, and it's more like a master and an apprentice. Uh, I happened to see something. I didn't tell Pastor Dave about this because I didn't want him to get any ideas. But it was a it was a program, and it was about someone who was training younger apprentice, someone who was the the master craftsman, and he was training the younger apprentices how to make really really super fancy guitars. Yeah, see, you see why I didn't maybe mention this to him? But the point is that there was a long, very strong relationship, a lot of learning over time, and it's a, it's a very, very different way of getting prepared to carry forward uh, something that is unique and special, and you just, you just don't learn it overnight. And you certainly don't learn it by um, turning on YouTube and watching one or two videos on how to build a guitar, especially a particularly special and good and, and nice one. So what do, what do you think of my, my, my uh, imagery there? <laughs> he, he didn't know that I was going to use that. But I like that, that, that idea that if we consider that the relationship, the ongoing relationship with Jesus is so, so important and that that's a relationship that builds us and, and grows us into reflecting more and more about Jesus and able to, to share Jesus and minister on his behalf. So that's kind of a bit of what Jesus was also reminding his disciples, but I think it's also a message clearly a message for us. Then he goes on to this, again, back to the challenge side, though, that just because Jesus faced uh, people who were criticizing Jesus, they said the miracles that Jesus could do were that somehow that was from the devil, which is such backwards, bizarre thinking. It's hard to imagine why they could make that, but they were just trying to find some way to, to tear down the good that Jesus was doing and, and acting as if it came from some kind of bad, evil, evil source. 
so that maybe they might, you know, again, as we try to represent Jesus and love others on Jesus' behalf, you know, that might be criticized, that might be tried, people might try to tear that down and, and call it wrong or call it bad somehow. But we shouldn't be afraid. That's, that's one of the things that he says very, very clearly in there. Uh, to, not, to, not, to not be afraid of those others who are trying to be critical or want to disregard loving others, caring for others. Not sure about the sparrows, though. I think perhaps just that even if God cares for something so small and seemingly insignificant, how much more God truly, obviously, loves us and cares for us and would never, never, ever, ever abandon us. So I will, I will say that what comes through very strongly, though, is that Jesus says over and over, don't be afraid, that we are going to be given guidance and strength from him, and the more we remain close to him, the more that we will know that we are fulfilling the mission that is given to us through Jesus to, to love and to share God's love into this world. Strengthened by the Spirit who gives us words to speak and hearts to care, let us bring our hopes and needs to God who listens. Fill your church with bold witnesses who will work for justice, serve with compassion, share your love, and spread the gospel. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. Pour out your spirit on those without access to fresh water and on those who dig wells to provide it for them, that they may be refreshed. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. Make families everywhere be places of safety, encouragement, and love. Protect and uphold healthy relationships between husbands and wives, parents and children, friends and neighbors, all your people. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. Wherever there is brokenness, bring healing. Bind up our wounds. Teach us compassion. Dry our tears. Give them comfort, reconciliation, and hope. Lord, we give you praise. For you always hear us. We lift our prayers to you, God of mercy, confident that all things are in your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. the potter
us mold us every Seeking truth Help me to see Your purpose in me Help me to hear Your spirit so near Help me to feel Your hand on me As you hold me Eternally Eternally The peace of the Lord be with you always And also with you Join with us in speaking these words. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Stay in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. You'll see us here again next week. <laughs>